Can you be held responsible for the actions of another? If yes, then in what circumstances? In today's video, we will be learning the case of Reyes v. Doctolaro, et.al. GR No. 185597 promulgated last 2 August 2017. Here, it will be discussed as to how an employer can be made responsible for the negligent actions of its employee. If you like to know, watch this short video discussion and subscribe for more useful information. Comment your legal questions and we will answer. The case of Reyes v. Doctolaro, ed.al. Facts The case arose from an altercation between respondent Orico Doctolaro, a security guard of Respondent Granger Security and Services Corporation and petitioners John E. R. Reyes and Merwin Joseph Reyes in the parking area of Respondent Makati Cinema Square, MCS for short. The respondents shot the petitioners but both parties alleged different version of the incident. Petitioners filed with the Regional Trial Court a complaint for damages against respondents Doctolaro and Avila and their employer Granger charging the latter with negligence in the selection and supervision of its employees. They likewise impleted MCS on the ground that it was negligent in getting grandeur services. In their complaint, petitioners prayed that respondents be ordered, jointly and severally, to pay them actual, moral, and exemplary damages, attorneys' fees and litigation costs. Respondents Doctolaro and Avila failed to file an answer despite service of summons upon them. Thus, they were declared in default. For its part, Granger asserted that it exercised the required diligence in the selection and supervision of its employees. It likewise averred that the shooting incident was caused by the unlawful aggression of petitioners who took advantage of their martial arts skills. On the other hand, MCS contends that it cannot be held liable for damages simply because of its ownership of the premises where the shooting incident occurred. It argued that the injuries sustained by petitioners were caused by the acts of respondents Doctolaro and Avila, for whom respondent Granger should be solely responsible. On January 18, 1999, the RTC rendered judgment against respondents Doctolaro and Avila, finding them responsible for the injuries sustained by petitioners. In reconsidering its decision, the RTC held that it re-evaluated the tax and the attending circumstances of the present case and was convinced that grandeur has sufficiently overcome the presumption of negligence. It gave credence to the testimony of grandeur's witness, Eduardo Ungi, the head of the Human Resources Department, HRD, of grandeur, as regards the various procedures in its selection and hiring of security guards. Issue whether Granger and MCS may be held vicariously liable for the damages caused by respondents Doctolaro and Avila to petitioners John and Mervyn Reyes. Ruling No. MCS is not liable to petitioners. As a general rule, one is only responsible for his own act or omission. This general rule is laid down in Article 2176 of the Civil Code, which provides, Art. 2176. Whoever by act or omission causes damage to another, there being fault or negligence, is obliged to pay for the damage done. Such fault or negligence, if there is no pre-existing contractual relation between the parties, is called a quasi-delict and is governed by the provisions of this chapter. The law, however, provides for exceptions when it makes certain persons liable for the act or omission of another. One exception is an employer who is made vicariously liable for the tort committed by his employee under paragraph 5 of Article 2180. Here, although the employer is not the actual tortfeasor, the law makes him vicariously liable on the basis of the civil law principle of pater familias for failure to exercise due care and vigilance over the acts of one's subordinates to prevent damage to another. It must be stressed, however, that the above rule is applicable only if there is an employer-employee relationship. This employer-employee relationship cannot be presumed but must be sufficiently proven by the plaintiff. The plaintiff must also show that the employee was acting within the scope of his assigned task when the tort complained of was committed. It is only then that the defendant, as employer, 
may find it necessary to interpose the defense of due diligence in the selection and supervision of employees. In the absence of such relationship, vicarious liability under Article 2180 of the Civil Code cannot be applied. The court found no employer employee relationship between MCS and respondent guards. The guards were merely assigned by grandeur to secure MCS premises pursuant to their contract of guard services. Thus, MCS cannot be held vicariously liable for damages caused by these guards' acts or omissions. Neither can it be said that a principal agency relationship existed between MCS and grandeur. On the other hand, paragraph 5 of Article 2180 of the Civil Code may be applicable to grandeur, it being undisputed that respondent guards were its employees. When the employee causes damage due to his own negligence while performing his own duties, there arises the juris tantum presumption that the employer is negligent, rebuttable only by proof of observance of the diligence of a good father of a family. The diligence of a good father, referred to in the last paragraph of Article 2180 means diligence in the selection and supervision of employees. To rebut the presumption of negligence, grandeur must prove two things. First, that it had exercised due diligence in the selection of respondents Doctolero and Avila, and second, that after hiring Doctolero and Avila, Granger had exercised due diligence in supervising them. Here, both the RTC and the CA found that Granger was able to sufficiently prove, through testimonial and documentary evidence, that it had exercised the diligence of a good father of a family in the selection and hiring of its security guards. As testified to by its HRD head Ungi, and corroborated by documentary evidence including clearances from various government agencies, certificates, and favorable test results in medical and psychiatric examinations. The question of diligent supervision, however, depends on the circumstances of employment. Ordinarily, evidence demonstrating that the employer has exercised diligent supervision of its employee during the performance of the latter's assigned tasks would be enough to relieve him of the liability imposed by Article 2180 in relation to Article 2176 of the Civil Code. Considering all the evidence borne by the records, we find that Granger has sufficiently exercised the diligence of a good father of a family in the selection and supervision of its employees. Hence, having successfully overcome the legal presumption of negligence, it is relieved of liability from the negligent acts of its employees, respondents Doctolero and Avila. Doctrine of the case. As a general rule, one is only responsible for his own act or omission under Article 2176. The law, however, provides for exceptions when it makes certain persons liable for the act or omission of another. One exception is an employer who is made vicariously liable for the tort committed by his employee under paragraph 5 of Article 2180. Here, although the employer is not the actual tortfeasor, the law makes him vicariously liable on the basis of the civil law principle of pater familias for failure to exercise due care and vigilance over the acts of one's subordinates to prevent damage to another. I hope you learned something new today. Comment your questions and we will answer them. For more useful information about the Philippine law and jurisprudence, subscribe to this channel.